So I'm back and we're the thin set's all set up and I've taped off the rim of the pot so that I don't get any staining on any portions of the pot I don't want. I have my work surface covered with some paper and I'm going to do the same thing we did while thin using the thin set. Set it on a garbage bag so that when we're done at the end, first it catches all the debris, but when we're done we can close it up and let it slowly cure for a day or two. Our next step, everything's ready, is going to be mixing the grout. And just like this thin set, it's safety first and we need to put on a dust mask because we don't want to breathe in the grout while it's in powdered form. When mixing the grout and similarly with other concrete or cement based products, I always like to put a little water in the bottom of my con mixing container first so that it doesn't get all caked up on the bottom. And then we're just going to scoop it in. Today and usually always, I'm using sanded grout. It's um, got, and it's also polymer fortified. So it's good for the weather. It's also stronger than unsanded grout. And it's made to go in spaces over an eighth of an inch. So you don't get any cracking. This grout is nice because it comes in a seven pound box and you can just buy it right off the shelf at any home improvement store. I always look for grout that's polymer fortified, again, because it makes it, even though it's a cement based product, a little bit more elastic for exterior use. I do want to say though, even though we're mosaicing a terracotta pot and all the tile that we used on this pot is uh, rated for exterior application, this pot will not be able to stay out and overwinter um, if you have a freeze thaw climate because the terracotta itself is going to absorb water and break up in the winter. And so we're done with the grout now. It's like, you know, thick cake to cookie batter. And we're just gonna set that aside while we get our tools ready and let it slake, which is kind of like a resting period where the chemical reaction starts. Our grout is slaked and I have gloves on. I wear gloves for two reasons. I use my hands a lot, the side of my hands a lot when I grout, so um, I wanna protect them. I also want to keep from staining from the grout colorants and grout has a lot of lime and other things in it and it dries your skin out so it's just a really good idea to wear gloves. The other things I have ready is this is one of my favorite tools. It's actually a potter's tool. It's called a mud tool and it works really good for cleaning off the excess. And a sponge and a bucket of water for when we get to there and any cleaning I need to do in the meantime. So I'm going to start by just tipping this and grabbing myself a glop of uh, grout and we just want to smear it in to every single crevice. At this point we're not worrying about what it looks like, we're worrying about filling it each space completely full. So you really want to push in and you want to push from a lot of different directions and get a lot of grout in every space. Now this sponge is dry and I'm just going to take it and do one last fairly light wipe over it because we don't want to wipe out too much grout at this point. So I'm rinsing out my sponge and I'm going to do one damp wipe. And when I say damp, I mean you need to try to get as much water out of the sponge as you possibly can. And this wipe is going to be even lighter than our last one. And just so gentle, we're taking some of the excess off, again getting the big clumpies off, and we're going to have time to clean this up even better before we're done. So now I think we're in really good shape, we're going to take a break. And we're going to just let this grout start doing its work. What I'm looking for is when I come back and I'll check it in 20 to 30 minutes that I can barely dent it with my 
my fingernail or something uh, similar. So I don't want to leave it too long because I still have leftover grout and I might find imperfections I need to fix when I do the final cleanup. So one of my favorite tools or whatever you want to call it is the cut up t-shirt because it's really soft and it does a really great job of just polishing off the tiles. Once in a while we got to do a little scratch. I still have my leftover grout in case I find any holes so I can fix them. If you stir it a couple of times while you're waiting, it helps keep your leftovers from setting up like it is on your pot. I'm just going to fix my little spot here and we're going to leave that set while I move on so it sets a little bit. So I'm pretty well cleaned off. Now I'm going to turn it upside down so that I can just clean up the bottom a little bit. And you'll notice in the cleanup, not really using any water because at this time it's a polishing. So now I'm going to try and just smooth out this parts I was fixing. Even if you use painter's tape, if you leave it on too long, it's going to leave some residue on your pot. And right here, you can see that this pot is wicking the moisture um, out of the grout. And just like the thin set, we want to slow that down. So I'm going to grab a spray bottle and I'm going to mist it. And then at the end of my work session, we're going to wrap it back up in the plastic bag so the final setting of the grout goes nice and slow. So I'm not really misting the grout at this point. I'm really just misting the pot to keep it wet and from wicking the moisture out of the grout. So at this point, I think we're done. The rim looks fairly good. The bottom's looking good. I'm going to give the pot a good spritz on the inside. And we're going to close the bag up. And this will allow the grout to cure slowly overnight. And we'll take a look at this together in the morning. Welcome back everyone and it is the next day and I've been letting this cure damply in the plastic bag and we're just going to unwrap it and there goes my mess and next we'll just look if it needs any final cleaning and polishing but it's looking really good. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and remember, life's a mosaic, you pick the pieces.